Now, before we end off today, we're going to actually make a actor of our own. So what we do is pressing Control and Space, bring up this menu again. And in the content folder, I'm going to make a new folder and that's going to be called BPS. That stands for Blueprints. In that, I'm going to right click and make a new Blueprint class. Here you can see there's a couple of different uh, common types and there's a lot more uncommon types. For the time being, we're going to stick to just the common ones. We've got actors, which again, an actor is literally any object within the game world. We've got pawns. These are specific types of actors that can be possessed by either a player controller, which we'll talk about later, or a AI controller, which does the same thing as a player controller, which is giving a specific actor instructions. But rather than the player doing it, it's an AI doing it. A character is a pawn with a little bit of extra information to it. It's got a movement component, so it can move around on its own. Uh, it can be told how fast it can move, what kind of surfaces it can walk up on, that kind of stuff. So anything that needs to be walking around, for instance, is probably going to want to be a character. Then you've got a player controller, which can give instructions to a pawn or a character. In a lot of situations, you could very much skip using player controllers altogether and just put all your programming inside of the actor that you're going to be using. It's slightly bad form to do that, but for the time being, uh, we're going to just skip over player controllers because while it's a very useful and powerful tool, it can also be a tad bit confusing to get started with. We've got a game mode base, which is kind of similar to a player controller in a lot of ways, but instead of giving instructions and information to a specific actor that is being controlled by the player, it's giving instructions and information for a specific level. Game mode can generally be a very easy way to transfer information from one actor to another without having a direct link between the two actors. It's a bit of a cheat to do it that way and not terribly efficient, but it's a very good way to do things. And I'm sure that throughout the tutorial series, we're definitely going to run into that. Now we've got actor component, which is a component that you can put within an actor. We'll talk about that more in a moment. And a scene component, which is not that relevant for what we're doing right now. So with that all explained, I want to reiterate one thing, right? Because this player controller and game mode base, they aren't actors but characters and pawns are. This is kind of like a hierarchy, right? So a character is always a pawn and a pawn is always an actor, which is important to understand because it means that anything a pawn can do, a character can do because a character builds on top of what a pawn already does. For the time being, we're going to just make a coin so we can select normal actor because it doesn't need to move. It doesn't need to really do anything. It only needs to be able to be picked up. So we can make this, call it coin, double click to open it and we get a new window. We can drag this up top to make it go full screen. So here we have the components. Remember what we just talked about being able to make an actor component that would go in here. Unreal comes with a bunch of different types of actor components by default and by and large that's probably going to be fine. You're probably not going to have to make your own, but you can. So you can add a lot of different things. One of the more common things that you're going to add are going to be either skeletal meshes or static meshes. In this case, let's go for a static mesh. Skeletal meshes are meshes that you can animate. Static meshes are meshes that don't animate and just remain the same. And we can call it coin because we're going to add a mesh for a coin. And here on static mesh, we can select the mesh that we want. Unreal again with the starter content has a lot of meshes already built in. So let's try to make a thing that looks like a coin. You know what? We can just use the materials view for that, right? It's, it's round. It's uh, pretty much all we need. And then we can scale it down a bit or up a bit. But as you see, it only scales it in one direction if I just scroll over it. And that is because, Control z to undo, it's not locked in. So if I press this button over here, it locks all these three axes together and I can just make the entire thing proportionally smaller. But this doesn't look like a coin, does it? It, uh, it looks like a uh, very much a testing texture because it is. 
So what we'll do is, again, by pressing Control Spacebar, we can, in our content folder, make yet another folder and call it Materials. And if we go into that and right click, we can make a new material. We'll call that a coin as well. And if we double click that, we will open up the material editor. How do we actually hook things up into here? Well, you can use image textures. So if you just drag in an image, you can connect that up to these pins over here. But I don't have any image textures right now. What I want to do is I just want to make this gold because we're making a coin. So what I can do is while holding three on the keyboard, left clicking, that gets me a vector three parameter. This is a output pin here that has three values, an X value, a Y value, and a Z value. So if I open up this here, which has constant, I will get RGB, which RGB and XYZ are, are kind of equivalent. In this case, because we're in a material editor, they're called RGB. So I can start fooling around with this, and you can see as I increase the R value, things get red. And then when I increase the G value, things go green. When I increase the B value, things go blue. But how do we make gold out of red, blue, and green? Well, you could start learning, okay, if I increase green and red together, that makes yellow. But that requires quite a bit of patience and just straight up experience, which you might not want to invest any time into. Because you just want to be able to get started with making your game. Well, luckily, if you have Vector 3 and you just double click, you get a color wheel here. And you can just simply drag this to the yellow part, then drag this up into being brighter, and then it'll be yellow. We can plug that into the base color, and as you can see, now this thing is fully yellow. But how do we make it more metallic? Because it's supposed to be gold, right? So, in much the same way that we did for making a vector 3 parameter, remember, that's what this is, we can make just a single parameter, which you can do by holding down 1 and just left-clicking. That just gets you a, a little node which has one value in it, which we're going to set to 1, and then hook up into the metallic pin over here. And you will see suddenly this thing is a bit more metallic. Now, we can copy this node and paste it. So we have a second one. And then we can hook that up into the roughness. So we can see, because it's set to roughness 1, this thing is very non-reflective. If I set it to roughness 0, it'll suddenly be very reflective. By default, if you don't set anything into it, it'll be in the middle at 0.5 which is what we had just a moment ago. That's what this is. Honestly, I think this is not quite reflective enough, so we're going to go down to like 0.2 maybe. 0.2 seems pretty good. Let's maybe 0.3. It's a little bit of experimentation, right? And this is, this, this is something I like. So we can apply that, and now we have this material. So going back to our coin actor that we've made, we can go here in the properties under material. We can now select the coin material we made. And now our little sphere has a golden material. We can press compile. And then when we go back into our map here, we change from brush editing mode back to selecting mode. Then pressing control and space, going back to our blueprints, we can start dragging these coins into the level. And a very neat little thing you can do is if you hold Alt while dragging into a certain direction, it'll just copy the actor over. So holding Alt, I can make a bunch of these coins. They're not very spread out well, but we now have a bunch of coins. But the thing is, right, if we now try to pick them up, we can't. We, we can just run into them and that doesn't do anything. Well, that's something that we're going to be talking about next time. But before we do that, we're making a 2D platformer, aren't we? This is not very 2D, this is very 3D. So before we end off, let's add a camera. Because the camera that exists in our default character is definitely not what we want to be using. So what we can do is we can go place actor and then all classes and we can look up a camera you have cameras and cinematic cameras we want normal cameras in this case so we can just set one down and you will see the camera view over here in the bottom right corner so we can set them down there and then set them 
something like that. And then when we start playing, we don't see that camera view at all. By default, it will choose to use the camera that's attached to your player character. So we'll have to tell the engine that we want to use this camera specifically. Well, how do we do that? Well, coming up here, we can go to open level blueprint. And this is an event graph, which every actor in the game is going to have an event graph like this but also every level has an event graph. This is where you'll end up doing all of the scripting for every single object in the game. But every single level might also have unique interactions. So what you can do is while you have the camera actor selected in the level editor itself, you can right click and create reference to camera actor. Now you have a node over here that represents that specific camera, but we can't really do too much with that so what we'll want to do is we'll want to add an event and the way you can add an event is just by typing here and we want a begin play event this event runs the instance the game starts up there's a lot of different types of events and you can make your own custom event that you can call whenever you want begin play is a very often used event now to tell the game that we want to use this camera we can right click and set view target Contact sensitive is on, so it doesn't really realize what we're trying to do. And usually it hides everything that isn't relevant to what the engine thinks we're trying to script here. But sometimes it messes up. So if you're looking for a specific node that you know exists, but it doesn't show up here, you turn off contact sensitive and suddenly we have set view target with blend, which is the node I was looking for. So I can just click on that and I'll add one. I can hook up this little arrow to that arrow. And now we have a couple of pins here. So target self is a player controller object reference, which we don't have yet. So let's skip that for the moment. And now we have a new view target, which is an actor object reference. Hey, the camera we just had is an actor object. So we'll see that if I start dragging off this node, it'll only highlight the actual pins that it can go into. So we'll hook this up into here. So this is now telling the game at begin play, set the camera as your new view target, which means that this is gonna be the camera used to render the game. But since Unreal is very much an engine that focuses on being multiplayer compatible, we have to actually tell the game which specific player that will count for. So we can right click again and get player controller. Then we get this node over here with player index zero, and we hook that up into the player controller here. These parameters over here you can just leave alone for the time being. So when we compile this and we go back, you will see that the game starts up from that camera perspective, but it doesn't move, which is a bit too bad because that really limits what you can do making levels, doesn't it? That's what we're also going to be talking about next time. Next time we'll be talking about a little bit of introductory scripting in picking up coins and making the camera follow us around. So thanks for sticking with me here. Things are about to get very, very exciting indeed. I would very much love to see you back in the next part.